Hey guys, it's Sam here from Wall Street Mastermind. I'm back here today with uh, another client interview for you guys. Um, today I'm here with Zeb, uh, which is one of my clients uh, who recently just got his offer. Um, and uh, so I wanted to get him on here to talk to you guys a little bit about it, just so you guys have um, a little bit of context. Uh, Zeb goes to NYU, um, College of Arts and Sciences, uh, so he's not in Stern, but um, he's on the tennis team. So he's a tennis player. And uh, he decided relatively late that uh, he wanted to do investment banking. So, um, you know, the fact that uh, he was able to, I guess, come from behind, so to speak, and uh, break into investment banking is something very exciting for him, very exciting for us. But uh, I know it's a similar situation that a lot of you are probably experiencing as well. So um wanted to just get him to come on here share his experience with you guys hopefully you guys have some uh takeaways from this that can help you as well so zeb thank you for uh, taking the time to talk to us today yeah thanks for having me here awesome so uh you know i know i just give like a quick uh 30 second overview on who you are but if you could also introduce yourself a little bit and maybe help people like just fill people in on kind of like your background and kind of your situation what what did you have going for you? What did you have going against you back when you first uh, started this process? Yeah, for sure. So um, I didn't really know that I wanted to do IB until like, I would say fall of my junior year. And then I didn't really start uh, recruiting until um, probably January of my junior year. And I'm also going to be a fifth year senior. So uh, currently, I just applied for a summer internship and got that. But yeah, so I was kind of late to the entire process and everything. And after really just scrambling for a few months, I was able to get a summer internship at a small boutique. Mm -hmm. And um, my experience at the boutique was okay. There wasn't a lot of deal flow. Uh, so honestly, it wasn't the best experience, but it did help me get that um, investment banking internship name on my resume. Mm -hmm. And then uh, over the summer while I was working at the boutique, um, I started really uh, trying to network and uh, send out my applications to everywhere. But uh, it was just a bit difficult just because um, I was behind and I really didn't know what I was doing. I was looking online, looking at a lot of like forums like Wall Street Oasis, but I was just like kind of confused as to the whole process. Mm -hmm. I see. So that boutique was your, I guess that's considered your sophomore summer then, right? Yeah, it's considered my sophomore summer, yeah. Okay, got it. Um, and then so before we even talk about everything that happened after that, obviously, like you said, you decided on investment banking relatively late, mm -hmm. but like how did you become interested in investment banking and like what kind of drew you to it? Like what what made you want to... Um, go after something that's you know so competitive and so difficult to get into yeah so I guess firstly it's just like financial stability right so uh, like honestly my parents have put a lot of money into college and everything and I really wanted to be able to come out of college with a job that where I could really just support myself and continue to live at the current level that I'm living Mm -hmm. And uh, investment banking is obviously a great opportunity to do that. Yeah. Uh, also, just like from talking to a lot of uh, people in the industry and upperclassmen and people who graduated, mm -hmm. uh, I really realized that like in investment banking, you're surrounded by a lot of really motivated people. And when you're in that environment, you really are able to push yourself. And so one of the biggest things for me has always been able to really live up to my fullest potential. And really talking to these people, I realized that I would be able to do that in investment banking. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of just also in investment banking, you get a lot of great exit opportunities and flexibility uh, after your experience in the industry. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So, I mean, that all makes sense. Those are a lot of the common reasons that we hear from, uh, from students. I mean, you mentioned how expensive, uh, how expensive college is and how much money your parents are investing in your education. I mean, Nowadays, to go to NYU is what, like 70K a year or something like that? Yeah, it's 75K a year. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> 75K a year. So $300,000 for four years. Yeah. And uh, you definitely don't want to graduate with some mediocre job that pays you like $50,000 or something. Right? Yeah, definitely not. Got it. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. 
Um, so then you started scrambling late sophomore year. Uh, you were able to secure the small boutique internship for the summer, which is obviously um, job well done. Um, and then obviously the recruiting for your junior summer was happening at the same time. Right. Yeah. And so how was that going for you? Like how many, uh, I guess let's start with like how many firms had you applied to when you kind of first came to Walsh and Mastermind? Yeah. So I had created like my own list of firms and I'd say there are around, around 50 to 75 firms I was looking at. Um, I like was sending out emails to, I would say anywhere between like 100 to 150 bankers. And it was taking a lot of time because like I was trying to personalize the emails a bit, but also not trying to make them too long. Mm -hmm. And, uh, honestly I was getting a few replies, getting a few coffee chats and everything, but I just didn't seem to really be able to get anything out of them. And it was like, just really frustrating. Mm -hmm. Got it. So you actually, um, you were super diligent about this. Like you had done a lot more, at least I'm not, I'm not saying in terms of the yield of your efforts, but in terms of the effort that you actually put into networking, I would say you've actually done a lot more than what most students that I talk to have done typically by the time they come to me. Cause like you had reached out to sounds like hundreds of people. Uh, whereas a lot of times people come and talk to me and they have only reached out to like maybe 20 or something like that right yeah so it's just that for all that effort i guess you you got some people to talk to you probably do you, do you remember roughly how many people actually talked yeah to you? so i would say i had around like 20 20 ish chats from around like 100 125 bankers i reached out to okay okay and then out of those conversations you said you weren't really getting anything out of it like did you did you end up getting any like first round interviews or like anything like that yeah, so I would feel like the chats would always go okay, would get some like good traction going, but like at the end of it, I wasn't really sure like how to just like move forward from that conversation. A few bankers were like, yeah, I would definitely like pass your resume along or like I'll pass it to HR or something. But honestly, out of those 100 chats or like out of those 20 chats, like I would say that I got zero interviews, honestly, from it. Mm, okay, got it. Okay, so, and you applied to how many places at that time? Uh, at that time, I would say, so this was like uh, August. I would say I applied to like 20-ish firms. Okay, so 20-ish firms, bunch of networking, but no no interviews. Outside of like higher views, I guess, which... Yeah, yeah, outside of higher views. I guess like everybody gets those, so... Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you're having trouble getting interviews is first and foremost, right? Um, what about on the interview side of things? Like, how were you feeling in terms of both your uh, behaviorals and your technicals? Yeah, so um, in terms of my behaviorals, uh, I kind of knew that they weren't the best and like, they're not gonna be like, uh, wow, that's a great answer or anything. Or like, wow, this kid is really different. But I also wasn't really sure how I would improve my answers because I didn't have really a lot of interview experience. And so I was I always thinking about ways to really just make my answers more compelling or unique. But yeah, I didn't really know how to. And I didn't really want to make all my answers about tennis either because um, from talking to some people in the industry, I realized that some people just don't really care that much about tennis. Mm. And so um, I talked to a few of my friends and like about how they did their behaviorals. But like, also everybody's behaviors are different. Everybody has different stories. So other than like a few small tips, that wasn't that helpful either. Um, in terms of technicals, um, there's a lot of technicals that I felt like I need to remember at this point. And I remember looking through like uh, Wall Street Oasis and uh, also breaking into Wall Street and just like looking at the 400 questions and trying to memorize everything. But like, Honestly, I forgot a lot of the answers a lot of times just because I felt like I didn't really have a conceptual understanding of behind a lot of these questions. Got it. Got it. Okay. So you sound like you were doing um, what most people will consider to be all the right things, right? You were doing what mostly everybody's already doing, right? Like you have prepared your behavioral answers. You were practicing with your friends. You were asking them what, how they were answering these questions. You were 
like talk, networking with bankers, gauging their reaction to your responses. You were reading the interview guide and memorizing the questions. So you were kind of, you were checking all the boxes already on your own. Yeah, I was definitely trying to. Okay, okay. But it's, it's, it's just that even though you were doing, you were putting in a lot of effort, you weren't feeling like you were getting satisfactory results, I guess, because- Just for like the amount of time I was putting in, I just like felt like I wasn't getting like what I needed to get out of it. Yeah, yeah. Because on the technical side, it's like, yeah, if you're just trying to memorize the answers, like you said, there's so many questions and it's kind of hard to remember everything you remember. Yeah. Um, whereas on the behavioral side, you knew that your answers probably weren't as, as good as they could be, but you also had, it's hard for you to come up with why they're not good enough on your own, right? It's hard for you to figure out what needs to be better about them because that's why they're not good enough in the first place, right? Yeah. Got it. Okay. So then how did you find Wall Street Mastermind, by the way? Yeah. So um, I feel like it, this kind of happened just because I was like, during that period of time, I was looking up, looking through a lot of finance guides. And so like, it kind of just popped up on my Facebook feed. And then um, I looked into the program a little more, uh, looked into your uh, introductory um, like video, the hour long video. And it seemed like it had a lot of potential. So I reached out to you uh, and scheduled my first consultation session in August. Got it. Got it. Okay. And then so we had that consultation and then like what made you like, what, how did you feel after our consultation? Were you like, Oh yeah, this is for sure something I need. Or is it like, mm, I'm not sure. Maybe like what kind of where, where were you at the time? Yeah. So going uh, after a consultation, uh, I was definitely like really wanted to work with you just because from your past experience and just from all the points you made during our conversation, it definitely seemed like something that could really um, maximize my efficiency in terms of both networking and also behaviorals and technicals. Yeah. And so really, I would say um, maybe like two, three days. I talked to my parents for a few days. Uh, two, three days after we talked, I signed up to the program. Yeah. We also had to talk to, I also had to talk to your parents uh, during that time as well, right? I had to talk to your yeah. mom. Yeah, um, definitely, because just like, uh, parents always really, I feel like, um, want to really talk to the person that they're giving their money to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And how would you say your mom felt about this? Like, she was probably a little more skeptical than you, right? Yeah. Which, is yeah. typically what we, which is typically what we encounter with parents, um, because they're not... I guess, I don't know. You tell me, what, why do you think she was more skeptical? It's just like they're not used to seeing programs like this or the fact that it's online or what do you think it was? I think, yeah, it's kind of a mix of a few things. It's just like they're not used to seeing programs like this. And also just because um, my parents aren't really in finance and while like, they kind of understand like overall that it's like very difficult, um, they don't really understand like just how difficult it can be to like break into investment banking. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of felt like I had the ability, like it shouldn't be that hard for me to do it by myself. Mm -hmm. But I really like, like emphasize them. Like this is something that I really wanted to do, but I started late and I just really needed like someone to help me to maximize my efforts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a, that's great that you mentioned that because uh, I think that's very, very common. That's a very common objection from, parents when the when when students talk to them because you know a lot of kids that want to work with me they have to talk to their parents about it and then uh when they ask their parents the number of questions always like well shouldn't you just be able to do this on your own like why do you need help right um because like you said the parents don't really know like oh you know only one percent or less of the candidates actually get in and you know what are all the things you have to do and they, they just it's not it's not because they don't want you to be successful it's just a little bit more out of ignorance just like they don't have the proper context right yeah exactly um, and like there's just a lot of parts to like breaking into banking and like they don't really understand all the parts to typically yeah so how did you uh what do you think what was it that you had to do to kind of help your parents get over the hump like yeah so i think you talking to them definitely helped a lot mm -hmm. because you were really just like it's kind of like a one-on-one -on -one conversation and you're really able to like show that like what you could bring and like what you can help me with. And then I also sat down with both of them 
and just like really talk to them about like like both how difficult it is and like how badly I actually wanted to break into banking. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that like a combination of talking to both like me sitting down with them and you sitting down with them convinced them because like obviously at the end like your parents like want you to succeed and really the important part is just like getting them to understand your situation I think. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. It's like they're on your side. They have to understand that uh that one you actually want this badly enough for them to make this investment because otherwise it's not worth it to them yeah and secondly they have to be able to feel like i'm also on your side and I, i'm actually gonna help you truly right mm -hmm. um okay got it so then we we're able to convince your parents you came to the program and then we're like what do you feel like um what do you feel like you got out of wall street mastermind like what do, what, what were the things that you feel like we helped you with um what do we improve for you like what were things that you know you you couldn't do on your own that you were able to do with our help yeah i mean so overall i think um the program really helped me with everything so like starting from like networking right the modules cover everything from like how to deal with information sessions to email formats to like cold emails uh formats on how to cold call people and even like how to set up a good linkedin profile so it's pretty comprehensive in terms of everything. And then for like behaviorals, um, you were really helpful with that. So I kind of like sent in my an the answers that I had. And then we kind of worked on it together, like through like both uh, mock interviews and just like constantly revising things to make them like the best that they could be. And that was really, really helpful, honestly, because I really didn't know where I was going wrong with my behaviorals. Mm. And uh, in terms of technicals, um, I would say the modules are like really unique compared to, um, let's say like a Wall Street Oasis guide or break into Wall Street guide because your modules, even though at the end they have like a, like an interview, like a question and answer section portion, um, the modules like go into pretty good detail on the th concepts behind a lot of the questions. And I think that's what helped me the most with technicals is because like uh, my biggest problem was like, I could memorize things, but if I didn't conceptually understand the questions, then memorizing things didn't really do much because if you kind of slightly changed the question a bit, then I would have no idea really how to answer it. Mm. Mm. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, so on each of those points, um, so you first talked about kind of like the networking piece, right? So did you see like dramatically different results with your conversion rate uh, in terms of networking before and after kind of what we taught you yeah definitely um i sent out i didn't send out as much emails uh after uh we started working together just because it was already like late august and uh, i was trying to focus a bit more on just like intending information sessions mm -hmm. but definitely the email formats that are given in the modules help a lot just because um I feel like they're refined and the emails that I was like sending out previously, it was, I was kind of trying to like test like the errors myself. And that's why I feel like I was kind of getting a lower response rate. Mm -hmm. And additionally, like also just like if I had any questions about like how to send an email to like a certain individual, I could always reach out to you. And that really helped uh, speed up the process a lot and really made me like more sure of what I was doing. Mm. So the biggest thing is really like, removing the trial and error you don't have to try to test things and see if this is going to work or if that's going to work and in the process of doing that you're wasting a, a bunch of potentially really good leads you have like something that's been kind of battle tested that you can just take and drop into your own emails and then just kind of execute essentially yeah exactly because i feel like with networking like every person you talk to like has the potential to like lead to something like an interview so like it's like I feel like it's really bad to just like be like testing on these people so yeah that definitely helps a lot mm -hmm. and then you started I mean I guess the proof is in the pudding right um originally for the first like 24 hours or whatever like you weren't really getting any interviews so how many interviews did you end up going through before you ultimately accepted your offer like after you joined the program obviously you had I know you had multiple interviews right um so yeah. like how many firms did you end up interviewing for yeah so i had multiple interviews at each firm but um yeah i think i interviewed around uh seven firms okay and, like i really started getting all these interviews like right after i started uh working with uh you <laughs> okay so something obviously had to change there and then so you started getting the interviews 
And then you talked about on the behavioral side, hey, you and I work together, both through mock interviews as well as through just, you know, directly editing the answers that you had. How much would you say your behavioral answers changed? And I ask this because, you know, a lot of times when I talk to students uh, about how we could help them with their behavioral answers, it's hard for people to actually visualize what that might look like, right? Like to them, they're like, I mean, look, I came up with these answers. I feel like they're pretty good already. Like how much can it actually change, right? So yeah. like, what would you say to people like that? Yeah, so I guess specifically for me, um, I would say like the, sh I would say the content was, like 50 50 sometimes it changed sometimes it wasn't but what really helped was like how the content was structured to like for an investment banking interview and to like get like certain qualities that i had that investment banker like interviewers would want to see from me and like you were really like helpful in like helping me get that information across and structure it in a way that was like both easy to understand and like both compelling and like kind of before that my behaviorals i felt like they had some themes but it was kind of like a little all over the place and it just wasn't like, I guess, up to the quality that I needed to be at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you make a good point. It's like, sometimes what needs to change about the answers is the content. It's like, if you're using a bad example or your content is just not good, then we're obviously gonna switch it up, right? Or like maybe uh, whatever you chose as your strength or as your weakness is not really like the best option, then we would change it up, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of the times though, it's not so much about changing the content. It's like you already have the right content or you already have the right story, but you're just not telling it very well, right? And then so that comes down to maybe saying too little or saying too much or maybe like saying things out of order or not being, um, not having like a good flow to it. And so those are all kind of different things that we will potentially change depending on what it is that you're doing wrong for any given question, right? Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, people always ask me like, well, so what, what can you really change uh, on my behaviorals? The answer is always like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know until I look at your answers, right? Yeah. Because everybody kind of um, makes different mistakes with their behavioral answers is what I find. Because like, that's, the, that's the tough part about it is like, there's no standard answer, mm -hmm. right? There's no like, it's not like technical questions where like, if you say X, Y, or Z, then that's a good answer. And if you say A, B, or C, then that's a bad answer. It doesn't work like that yeah um, it's kind of how like you like structure your experiences yeah and i mean a lot of that it's not like i was born i was born with like you know god-given talents for investment making behavioral interviews it really <laughs> just comes from a ton of experience over the years right from having seen a lot of different people interview from having helped a lot of clients like this just it's a craft that you know you hone over time which most college students haven't had the opportunity to do that, right? So it's hard for them to be naturally really, really good at it, right? And just like kind of a side note, like just because of the fact that like you were able to help me with my behaviorals, I felt like my delivery of them was a lot more sure because like I know like what I, I was saying, like I was like, it was important and I was able to like get across everything I wanted to. So that really helped with just like being sure that I was saying what I needed to. Mm, you mean like on the delivery, on the delivery of the answers, because you have more confidence and certainty in your answers, it also came out better. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And that's, that's a really great point that, you know, people don't often realize like they've done um, studies and like research on this, but like when it comes to communication, uh, which is really what you're doing during an interview, but when it comes to communication, they say like, I don't know how they measure this stuff to be honest, but it's like this type of way of doing this, but they say 8% of it is what you actually say. And then something like, uh, I don't know, 30, 35% is uh, how, like your tonality, like how you say it. And then like the other like 55% or whatever is your body language. I'm probably like getting the exact percentages slightly off, but it's ballpark correct. It should add up to 100%. But like, yeah, if you think about that, it's like only 8% of it is what you actually say. Right? Which is like so important, but it's more like, Hey, when you're uncertain about whether your behavior answers are actually good or not, or when like your behavior answers aren't very organized and your thoughts are kind of scattered all over the place, it's harder to 
have good delivery because as you're sitting there in front of the interviewer, you're trying to think really hard about, uh, what, what was the next thing I was supposed to say? It's almost like you have everything scripted out, mm -hmm. but that, that causes you to come off kind of robotic and like the interviewer can tell when you're just like trying to memorize something, right? And that's yeah. not how you want to come off. So, um, the delivery is so, 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 so important. Right. Um, and so I'm glad we were able to help you with that. Um, and then on the technical side, the, the interesting thing you mentioned was that um, the modules, the difference between our modules and kind of the, the interview guys that you were already using on your own is just the conceptual understanding that, that we were able to help you kind of develop, right? As mm -hmm. opposed to like, because the way we teach technicals is we don't really make you memorize anything. Yeah. Right? Um, it's actually more of a, I would describe it as it's more like a lecture style. Would you say that's accurate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, um, but once we walked you through all the concepts and you actually understood them, my thing is like, if you, once you actually understand the concept and the light bulb goes off in your head, you actually don't need to do much memorizing at all because it's like, once the light bulb goes off, you, you understand it and it's internalized and it's almost like, something magic happens and you automatically it's now in your it's now in your head right yeah. right do, do you kind of feel what i'm saying like you understand you understand what i'm saying it's like versus like if you're just memorizing something without really understanding and then you actually have to like memorize it and then you don't retain that information um if you don't like continue to basically refresh yourself on on the, on the materials like on a daily or weekly basis yeah definitely and also just like when I, for me, when I actually like understood the concepts, like I wasn't like really scripting my answers anymore. And I feel like my interviews could tell that like I actually understood what I was saying instead of just really just memorizing everything verbatim, which helped a lot in interviews. Yeah, yeah, because usually if they ask you a question and then you answer it and it sounds kind of scripted or it sounds like you're just memorizing, as an interviewer, what I used to do is like, then I'm gonna ask you follow-up questions to drill down further. Right. And I'm going to drill down further to see if you can answer the follow up questions, because if you're just memorizing, usually you won't be able to answer the follow up questions because you don't understand what you're actually saying. Right. Yeah. But if you're not scripting it uh, and it's very conversational. Um, then when I ask you the follow up questions, you'll be able to answer whatever I ask you. And that's when I'll feel confident that you actually know your stuff. And that's when I'm actually going to view you as a viable candidate. Right. Definitely. And also, like, I feel like, um, while, like, a few of the overarching questions uh, a lot of times do get asked, um, nowadays, like, like, just from my interviews, a lot of people are asking questions that just, like, tweak the questions that you see in Breaking to Wall Street and everything a little bit. And so, like, I feel like if I honestly, if I didn't conceptually understand uh, a lot of the topics in terms of, like, let's say the financial statements and everything, uh, I probably wouldn't have been able to answer a lot of the questions. Right, right, because, and that's a great point, because the interviewers now, they know that everybody out there who they're interviewing is probably already reading and memorizing the same one or two guides that everyone's using, right? Everybody's reading Breaking to Wall Street, 400 Questions Guide, everybody's reading the Wall Street Oasis Guide, and so if they don't change up the questions in these interviews, it's almost pointless for them, right? Because, like, what, how are they going to be, be able to determine who, who's actually a good candidate and who's not if everybody can just regurgitate the same answers to their questions, right? So that's why they're starting to throw in a lot of curveballs because they need to figure out who actually truly knows their stuff. Yep. Okay, very cool. So yeah, it's more like um, application knowledge at this point as opposed to just like I guess brute force memorization basically that's like that's kind of the level that candidates nowadays have to get to right i feel like honestly if you understand the concepts better it also like helps you actually on the job right because i feel like if you're just memorizing answers it doesn't really help you for like when you actually if you do get that internship like you don't really know anything absolutely absolutely so i guess um Let's uh, let's talk about so like what was the ultimate outcome for you? Like where are you? Uh, where did you get your offer from? Where are you going to be going? Um, we'll uh, 
stop with the suspense at this point? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I had uh, I ended up with uh, two super days, and uh, I ultimately uh, decided to go with uh, Cantor Fitzgerald. Okay. Uh, and I've talked to a lot of people on their healthcare team, and so I'm pretty sure that yeah, next summer I'll be interning with Cantor Fitzgerald in their healthcare group. Yeah, and that's awesome because healthcare kind of jives really, really well with your background, right? Yeah, definitely. So my previous experience, uh, I worked at a biopharmaceutical company in Shanghai, and my parents kind of both are into industry, so they're definitely pretty happy about that. And also Cantor's, uh, I'm really excited about Cantor specifically just because um, their healthcare group has really like expanded over the past few years, and they're pretty high in the league tables too now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was like, uh, they, they're, they're, I think they're, yeah, they're definitely a very good healthcare shop, which is um, kind of right up your alley. And so I think it's a very, very awesome opportunity for you. I'm super happy for you. Uh, yeah. So do you have um, <clears throat> any last minute advice for people? Like, you know, especially maybe people who are kind of in a similar boat as you, where they found out they wanted to do investment making relatively late, maybe when you know, their junior or summer internship recruiting process had already started just because it starts so ridiculously early nowadays, right? Yeah. Like what advice would you give people um, who are kind of behind on things and but still haven't given up yet and they, and they, and they want to get to kind of the type of outcome that you were able to get to? Yeah, so I guess overall, I would say that um, it's definitely going to be hard. Like uh, my first few interviews um, were definitely tough. and. Uh, I didn't do so well in some of them just because like I haven't really had that many interviews, but like you have like obviously you to help with everything. And like, you, like I talked to you about some of the things that I was struggling with and we kept working on it. And if you keep working on it, I mean, I feel like there, you're just going to be able to succeed. And um, also additionally, just like you really need to be on top of everything. Like Sam, like you, you're always going to be there to help them with stuff, but in the end, um, it's kind of up to like yourself to do everything. Like Sam is not going to be able to like do the interviews for you or do all the practices for you. So it's really up to you. But if you put in the effort and if you do it efficiently and smartly, um, I think that honestly, you'll be able to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Awesome, man. That's a uh, really great advice. So <clears throat> basically, you know, make sure you get the help that you need. Um, but, but still at the same time, take ownership of your work and, and make sure you put in the work, but no, I guess the important thing is to know what it is that you don't know, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and know what you don't know and then know to reach out for help on those things Yeah, uh, and, and to not try to just do it all on your own and figure it out because chances are you probably won't be able to figure it out, at least not in time for whenever recruiting is over by, right? Yeah. And I don't think like the recruiting season is a good time for trial and error because like I feel like every opportunity could be the opportunity right right or or you know every opportunity you miss um what I always tell people is the longer you take to figure everything out the further downstream you're gonna have to move right to smaller and smaller and smaller banks yeah but eventually there are no banks left that are even worth working for it and you just probably don't end up in investment banking right yeah okay cool man so I mean Guys, that's uh hopefully that's some you know good inspiration for you guys. I know a lot of you um, are in similar situations uh, where maybe you didn't realize you wanted to do investment banking until you know your sophomore year or sometimes even your junior year. Uh, I, I sometimes talk to people who don't realize until senior year, um, and so it's not necessarily your fault, right? That's just like it is what it is. Like maybe nobody around you was doing it, or maybe you go to a non-target school or for whatever reason, maybe you're not a business major and you just didn't find out about banking until later on. The unfortunate thing is, you know, nowadays investment banking recruiting starts so early. Like it starts pretty much during the second semester of your sophomore year. And so if you don't, um, if, you, if you're feeling behind or like if you look around and you know how competitive it is and all of your classmates have already been, been preparing for this since whatever, freshman year or something and they have a huge head start on you, then the only logical thing to do would be for you to figure out like, what can I do to accelerate my recruiting process and help myself catch up, right? Catch up to my, not even just catch up, but exceed or, or, or surpass my competition, right? And so 
typically to do that, um, it's going to require you to have some sort of competitive advantage that your competition does not have, right? It's going to require you to um, probably have extra outside help uh, as opposed to just trying to figure everything out on your own. So if that's what you feel like you need, if that's what you're looking for, if you want to get to a similar um, successful outcome, just like Zeb has, um, I would encourage you to book a free strategy session with my team. It's the you know initial consultation that Zeb talked about. Um, and you know, the call is completely free. You know, what we do on this call is we just learn more about you. What is your situation? What have you been doing? What's working? What's not working? What are your goals? And, uh, what do you feel like you need help with? Right. And whatever it is that you may need help with, because every single person is different, which is why we have to talk to you guys first. We don't take a one size fits all approach. Uh, we'll let you know if we think we can actually help you. And sometimes we won't be able to, to be completely honest, sometimes we won't be able to. Um, the thing with us is we never act like we can help you if we actually can't, right? But if we can't help you, then we're happy to walk you through what it is that, may, that might look like and, uh, and and what kind of results we think we will be able to get for you, right? And so um, either way, you walk away from this call with a lot of uh, learnings and takeaways. Uh, we've even had people that just get on this call, talk to us, and then they learn so much and then they walk away and they implement what we taught them on this call and then they're able to get, get a very successful outcome on their own. And that's totally cool too. Like that makes us very happy as well. So either way, uh, I would encourage you guys to book this call and talk to us. Uh, and uh, to do that, you just go to www.wallstreetmastermind.com slash apply. It's uh, the street is abbreviated to ST. So it's www.wallstmastermind.com slash apply. And uh, yeah, you'll be able to pick a time that works for your calendar. And then uh, we look forward to speaking with you and potentially helping you on this journey. All right. So Zeb, um, again, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to everyone today, share your experiences with them. Uh, hopefully, you know, give them a little bit of inspiration and obviously um, job well done on your part in terms of putting in the work and, um, practicing and learning and asking questions and doing the mock interviews and just doing all the things you're supposed to do. And uh, you definitely earned this offer and you deserve everything you have. And uh, I'm excited for you. Cantor is a great uh, healthcare bank and uh, definitely let's stay in touch. And I, I look forward to seeing all the success you have uh, going forward and uh, keep me up to date on, um, on what happens over the summer. Yeah. Thanks, man. I'm more than happy to share my experiences. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, uh, that'll be it for today. Thank you guys for tuning in and, uh, we'll be back with more of these uh, in the near future. All right. All right. Talk to you guys later.